would like to ask you um, about your decision in 2000 to step down as chief executive. Mm -hmm. um, looking back, do you regret that? What was the um, decision-making process behind it at the time? Well, the, the truth was that um, Starbucks, since we went public in June of 1992, for 15 consecutive years, was basically on this magical carpet ride in that everything we touched, almost new products, new cities, new stores, everything just seemed to turn to gold. And, and what I write in the book was that we were never that good. And in fact, the growth and success of the company in many ways covered up mistakes. Now, I left in the year 2000 and, and, uh, as CEO when things were extraordinarily good. And up until around 2005, 2006, things continued that way. Uh, but I began to sense that we were measuring and rewarding the wrong things. And in fact, growth, our relationship with our stock price and Wall Street had somehow become integrated into the core purpose of the company. And I wrote a memo uh, to the then CEO, very good guy, and the leadership team at the time. And I should say I wrote hundreds of memos over the last 20 years. And it was not meant to be an indictment or a criticism, but actually to display my passion and love of the company and my concern about what was going on. A few days after that email was sent, there was a knock on my door, and my world basically was completely turned upside down because the memo was leaked. And after it was leaked, it created a firestorm of negative publicity, uh, competition, uh, employees, everybody just was involved in this swirl where the headline was Schultz indicts the management of the company and has lost confidence in the leadership of Starbucks. And um, that really wasn't the case. However, in the weeks and months that followed, the cataclysmic financial crisis was approaching and the things that I had written about began to surface. And to make a long story short, uh, the board and I determined that I would come back as CEO in, in January of 2008. So tell us about the transformation agenda and how that perhaps was the sort of antivirus to start the change. Um, well, as I write in the book, uh, one of the first people I told that I was coming back, because I couldn't tell many people, uh, was I was on a bike ride with a friend of mine, Michael Dell. Uh, and, and, um, and he had come back a year before. So he had been through all of this. And he said to me, I want to show you something. And he gave me a, a document which was entitled Transformational Agenda. And his document had multiple pages on it, but it gave me the idea that we should produce one page. And that one page should be the transformational agenda of the company over the next 12 to 18 months. And whether you were a 20-hour part-time barista or a president of a division, you could look at this document and understand with great granularity exactly what it is we were going to try and do, how we we're going to do it, and your role and responsibility in it. And that transformational agenda basically became the blueprint for transforming the company. But we had to reduce the focus and the attention to the lowest common denominator. And, and we also, I think, you know, we are in a non-tech business. Starbucks has no technology. Anyone can open up a coffee store and everyone has. And so we've got to create an understanding that our business is based on creating an enduring emotional connection with one another and our customers. And, and as a result of that, we had to recreate the experience in our stores. Now, we also made some very tough decisions and made some specific, highly unorthodox decisions. And one of the biggest unorthodox decisions we made at the height of our problems is we decided to close every store in America to retrain over 100,000 people at a cost of $7 million. Now, I can't tell you what people were saying in anticipation of this decision. They, they wanted to hang me from the roof. You know, and then once the media got a hold of this, it was the beginning of the end. And the headlines were, you know, the bloom is off the road, Starbucks is over, they're retraining their people. But again, we were no longer deeply committed to the core principles of how we started. 
And as I said earlier, we were measuring and rewarding the wrong things, and one of them was transaction speed. And we were, we're not in the transaction speed business. We're in the business, literally, of enhancing people's day by, pro by producing the world's best coffee. And we had to retrain our people. But the act of closing our stores and admitting to ourselves, forget the rest of the world, that we had work to do, and we feel so strongly about this that we're going to go back to the beginning and back to the core. I mean, this would be like, uh, you know, I, I don't know what the analog would be, but, you know, a, a company that produces a car saying, you know, we've got to go back to the assembly line and, and understand how to, how to construct an automobile. I mean, this, this was, it was, it was unseemly at the time. But again, uh, this was the beginning of transforming the company because we were going to have direct, honest conversations with ourselves. And this was a galvanizing moment for those 100,000 people in the U.S.